Hey, this is Steve from My Bear It All. I thought I would share a tip today about using the dual fisheye plugin and when you run into issues with when it stacks it improperly. And what I mean by that is, I'll show you an example. It shows a lot of pink over objects. And this could be a stacking issue. I've seen it happen before. I'm not quite sure if you guys have. So when using the HDR version of the dual fisheye plugin, plus or minus two, three, or four, it'll stack a bunch of these images together. And what you'll end up with is two files. You'll end up with the original DNG file. As you can see, you know, it's not very, it's not, it's not a lot to pull up. I mean, yes, in this case, I can pull out the, the sky a lot better, but depending on um, your highlights. But you'll notice in this area, the car is white. Now, this is the 16-bit. Shows doesn't really show it here, but we're going, what we're going to do is load both of these into Photoshop. And now you can see this is the 16-bit stacked version. So we have a lot of um, pinkish tones in here, and you can see it on the house over here as well. And there's some, probably some other areas um, that that um, have this. So what I want to do is let me set all these back to default. So when you have the DNG files, if you've already messed with them, it will save the file and save all your settings, which is, you know, obviously awesome. So what I want to do first is go ahead and try to get both of these DNGs um, about the same kind of uh, exposure settings, uh, same color and everything like that. So what we'll do here is remove it from so I'm gonna hit auto and then I'm gonna go ahead and I usually for the the dual fish eyes I'll bump up the exposure you know bring out the highlights um, and do some various other changes I don't want to go in too deep into that but what I want to do is try to match these two images as best as possible so this one's a little bit more blown out, so we'll bring down the exposure a little bit. And, you know, this is not a tutorial on color correction or editing this, um, editing your um, exposure settings. But let's go ahead and now take these two files. I've got them as close as I wanted to and bring them into Photoshop. I usually do uh, save them as a smart object. So if you hit hold down shift, uh, you can open the objects as smart objects. And then in this case I have the HDR 16-bit and the original DNG file. So what I usually like to do is um, I'll drag this HDR 16-bit over to the original and I'll put it on there and then I'll just align it into there. So now I have the 16-bit layer on top and the original DNG on the bottom. So you can see the differences. Now, in order to fix this problem without having to do a lot of work, especially if you've already shot uh, something at a location, you're like, oh, damn, you know, this is going to cause me a lot of work or I need to reshoot this. What you can do um, is basically use a masking technique to basically mask out the 16-bit version with the, the, the version below it that already has the white car. So, and you can see that it, it doesn't look too bad. So what we'll do is um, basically make sure you have your 16-bit version on top. You go down here to the masking section, which then creates a little masking option. So with masking, if you're not familiar with it, um, black, using a brush to paint with black will show what's underneath it, show the layer underneath it. So that's what we want to do. And then white will basically just show the original layer. So what we'll do is uh, basically, you can hit X on your keyboard to switch between this over here. So we want black and then B for brush. So I'll go ahead, and then I use the bracket keys on my keyboard to um, size up my brush layer. 
Now I'm not going to do a super fat, um, you know, high detailed version of this. I just want to show you that if you start painting with the brush, you can see what's coming through from the other side. So now basically what we do is now I'll just we'll brush size down. We're getting the car all white again, and then we're actually getting details back that have been removed on the stacking version. So a little bit up, up here. So now we have this the car in our 16-bit version uh, fixed. And let's see if we can find something else in here. So oh, the house. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Paint the house a little bit. Again, this is just a quick version of this. So go ahead and do that. Over here as well. Okay. Anything else? Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. There's a car. <laughs> it's the stack version has uh, caused it to look uh, kind of funky. So let's bring that back. In. And then this one looks a little bit the same way. So, so now we have basically where we're using the original DNG file and then on the 16 bit, able to mask those out and fix some issues that we've seen. So, what I do from here is I'll go ahead and then save it as um, a TIFF. Save as Let's see, example, I don't need the layers. And then what I do in my case is I use PT GUI to stitch. So got a 159 meg, uh, megabyte TIFF file. Let's open it up in PT GUI. I'll go ahead and align images. That looks fine for, you know, just this demo purposes. I'll create the panorama. I also save it as a TIFF. You can also um, set it to 16-bit if you want. You can change a bunch of uh, options here. So let's just go ahead and create this panorama real quick. We'll exit out of PT GUI. And now what I'm going to do is do a quick edit on the panorama. Open it in Photoshop. From here, you can also do some more color corrections or adjustments. Um, a tool that I found that I use a lot is um, sometimes uh, basically the denoise filter. However, this is not a free software. It uses some AI algorithm to help denoise your images. So that helps quite a bit on these cameras because they tend to have a lot more noise. Let's see if I can find an example of noise. And then also sharpens it up a little bit. And then you have a little bit of control over here. So let's see. A little more sharpened, doesn't really have a lot of noise into it. And, you know, luckily the 16 bit merged uh, DNGs, you know, also reduce the noise. So I'll go ahead and save that, let that process for a second. And then I'll go ahead, my last step will be just to remove the tripod, save it back out as a TIFF, and then publish it to whatever software that I, I'm using. For me, it's uh, 3D Vista, and I'll usually bring in TIFFs at the highest uh, resolution as possible. And it has the ability to create uh, multi-resolution um, panoramics for you, which is a good option. So this is kind of my workflow for the most part. You know, I think it was important to show the ability to use masking technique to remove some issues from your, uh, your stack DNG if that was an issue. And then basically that'll help you out and you can go from there. So let's see a little tripod there real quick. We'll use the, the healing brush. Oh, sorry. I should mention there's a, sometimes depending on your computer, the resolution of your panoramic, 
what you can do is instead of editing in this mode, um, you can create a layer. So I hit, you know, I select the whole layer, I copy it and paste it. So now I have the layer on top. So now when I'm doing any brushwork, it's super fast versus, you know, dealing with the actual sphere. And it just makes work faster. Um, you know, I can go ahead and fix this. I'll use a little clone tool here real quick. And there we go. So the last bit would to merge this down into your panorama. And then what I like to do, if you export this panorama from the options from 3D, can't see it, export panorama, it puts it as a JPEG. So what I'll do is I'll click on the spherical map here, which opens it up. And then this allows me then to save it as a TIFF. So I'll save it as a TIFF into my folder that I was at, examples. And we'll call that fixed. And we'll go ahead and finish this up. Oops. Oh, discard the layers. Huh. There we go. And if we look up here, oops, hit this. We have our fixed version, which is 81 megs. So basically we went from the 16-bit DNG, we used the original DNG uh, to fix some issues using masking, and then we outputted them both as TIFFs, used PT GUI, quick alignment, output that as TIFF, and that's basically my workflow. And for the most part, I'll run my stuff through Topaz Denoise AI. It's not free, it's not required, but it does help out. I've seen some pretty noisy skies before, which is definitely sharpened up. So if you like this video or if you've learned something or have some questions, leave some, leave some comments below and uh, I'll try to answer them and I'll try to do some more videos in the future. This one's just very quick, kind of thought I would share this with the community and hopefully you've learned something. Thank you very much.